Kim Shirobi. The Bog Center team is a collective of progressive thinkers from diverse backgrounds, creating a tapestry of independent thought towards the collective spirit of using revolution as a gateway to evolution through struggle. In mission, helping grassroots activists develop visionary leadership and critical thought to rebuild and re-spirit equitable community is the goal. The stories, ideas, and philosophy of the Boggs Center team is inspired by the legacy of Jimmy and Grace Lee Boggs' instrumental work. Watch, listen, and experience this heartfelt message from the Boggs Center team. Uh, nothing in particular, but what stands in my mind is uh, the fact that Grace had her, I would say it's her 91st birthday party, and a lady by the name of Nettie Kravitz, who was their roommate, comrade at one point. Nettie uh, was from New York and had, again, been an activist and comrade with them. Um, ended up in my life through my former husband's um, family. And she said to me, and I don't even remember why Nettie knew that I was with the Ball Center or part of it, but she said, I'm going to Grace's uh, 91st birthday party, would you like to come? And that gave me the opportunity to go back. And at that, I mean, and get back uh, associated with the center. And at that um, party, Grace was said, you better use my, you, you all should use my marbles. She was offering that to the crowd. You should use my marbles um, before I lose them. And I said, oh, you know, I should use this lady's marbles. I, I took the invitation. And so I think I called her Grace the next day. And then um, she invited me over, said I could come visit and we had a, uh, long talk I can't remember what it was about but it must have been enough to intrigue me and want to go back and then I kept going back to the center after that. So you kept going back to the center after that. Um, as you began to engage what were some of the things that stood out about the way that um, the way the Bar Center takes on projects and programs? Okay. So um, one of the things that was going on when I kept going back was uh, they were talking about education and uh, being an educator, phys ed teacher with uh, DPS, um, just just like being a lifelong learner, uh, being involved in the conversations about education was um, important to me. Um, this was very stimulating. It was people from all walks of life, all types of educators. And that really kept me going back because I felt like I had a handle on that subject um, and was able to find people who had the common, not only common belief system, but was interrogating ed education at the time. Um, and that's really kind of, I think I, I was in the midst of some of the conversations around the Bob school being started or where they were thinking about starting school. So. Um, it was really the subject that kept me going um, at the time. So I came in at the, right, at the right time as far as I'm concerned. So when you talk a little bit about education and that subject, can you speak a little bit to um, what were your feelings at the time about education and how have they evolved since then? Hmm, that is a good question. Um, I really can't. Uh, well, okay, yeah, I guess I can tell you uh, look, there are some changes. I was just thinking about some of the changes. So, one of the changes, uh, well, so, let me start again. So, the word education, I think just like many people, when I, when I was using the word at the time, I immediately was uh, referring to schooling. The, the academic, the three R's, um, public schools, and even, even private schools. And what has happened since I um, have been involved in the conversations is be, I've become much clearer about what education means to me, that it's not just um, schooling education, but it's um, education that happens everywhere, every place, every minute, all the time. And so I'm real clear that education is not just that one aspect. Also, um, there, I've just had so much um, exposure to how people um, learn, um, 
how to be patient with them. Uh, one of the educations that I received from being at the Vox Center because of uh, Rich Feldman and his family being there was one of, uh, of disability um, uh, education. And I've watched uh, their son Micah grow and mature. And even in watching him grow and mature, in his education, it allowed me to see how other people could be uh, academically educated who were, and our students who are not getting education in school, I mean, getting that kind of education in school right now. So some of the tools that Micah uses, I think uh, our children should be using right now, some that are uh, falling behind um, in the academic education. So those are, um, some of the ways. So there are just many aspects of education that I learned. Just being in the center and being around people who understand that um, it's good to associate education with um, with place and making sure that education um, is really meaningful um, and relevant to where people are, and not just something that you learn from books. I've always thought that, but I really know how to practically put that in uh, practice.